Teaching Toby is presented by Master Channel. Instantly produce outstanding masters at masterchannel.ai. Use the code METOBY during checkout for 50% off. Welcome to this... Um, <laughs> Cheers! What should we call it? We should call it uh, Teach Toby Super Master Class of the Year 2021 in quarantine. But life is amazing. <laughs> What am I doing in this cabin with Matoma teaching me music production? Well, I'm Toby and I'm part of a DJ duo with my girlfriend. But producing music? Oof, that's hard. I would maybe rather call it an experiment because uh, we don't know where this is going. Okay, Toby Tobes experiment? Yeah. So what I'm gonna do throughout this uh, series of uh, classes. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try to create my own track uh, and uh, from scratch from A to Z and um, if you follow uh, with us I uh, hope that you can do the same thing because uh, we will you know start from scratch and uh, Tom will uh, guide me through you know every part of music producing and uh, and uh, all the steps from basically opening up a project to understanding the essential tools of what you need within the project like from EQing to compressing to to effects to to vocal editing to to chopping to sampling so we we're, we're going to take the whole shebang but we're going to make it fun I think the most important thing here to know especially for young kids out there that buy a laptop and they buy a software like if you work in Cubase or if you work in Logic or if you work in in Ableton or if you work in Pro Tools like you can even you can watch this tutorial because this is just going to be on basic principle of understanding the need from A to B in producing a song yeah A yeah. to Z I hope yeah A to Z <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to be the guy who asks the, the dumb questions here. <laughs> you know, there's, there's never a dumb question. Yeah, that's yeah. right. There's only dumb people. Uh, that's, uh, that's, a good, uh, that's a good start. Thank you for the watch. Uh, anyway, we want to involve you too uh, in the process. And uh, if you have any questions about what we're talking about uh, or music producing, then uh, hit us a question at uh, the email below. Uh, and uh, every week uh, for our Twitch live stream, uh, we will go through some of those questions and uh, you know try to get some uh, some involvement with you guys because uh, that's was it's, that, that's what this is all about. <laughs> we are here, and uh, why are we here? So basically, we are at my cabin. Yeah, beautiful uh, cabin. No, we are here because um, over the years of, uh, of touring, I think it's very important to, to understand one essential thing when it comes to making music. And it's the creative process. Mm. Ever since I was a kid and I bought my laptop, I was 16 years old, I was, I was sitting in my basement and I felt like the creative process was like hard to get. So mm. every time I needed inspiration, I went outside. Mm. And for me, like nature has always been that key to maybe like, if my brain is not working in the way I want it to work, I, I need to clear my mind. Mm. I think like when, you, when it comes down to the musical aspect and when it comes down to the creativity, you just need to flow within the project. And if you have stuff on your head, in your mind, that interrupts it, noise basically, it's easily to get distracted from the project and from like the inspirational crea creativity process. Yeah, but I guess that's why uh, you go to songwriter camps and stuff like that to isolate yourself and, and get in, in, into a creative bubble. And uh, yeah, but I notice that when I come here, it, it's, you know, we're in this creative vibe, this creative yeah. space. I feel so much more creative now than back in the city. So I, 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 think, I, I, I get you. I think it's super important for people that if you have creative friends, yeah. surround yourself with crea creative people. Yeah. That 
inspires you to push you even more, push you. Every, every single day I want to push myself into new boundaries. I want to learn new things. And that's the beauty with music. Like if, if I go into this, this project here and I think to myself, okay, I'm fully learned. I've, I've failed. Mm. Because every day there's something new you can learn. Mm. I don't want to make the same track I, I made yesterday because no. I've already made it. Yeah. A lot of people, they, they, they follow my journey. A lot of people, they ask about like, oh, why can't you make a song that you did in 2015? Because the answer is easy. That, yeah. that doesn't satisfy me as a creative person yeah. because I've already made it. Yeah. And that's the important part in the creative process to have fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the m most, that's the, I feel like w when you have producers and they talk about like, oh, you can, you can have this, buy this plugin and you will sound like a, like a million dollar. Oh, that sound sounds like a million dollar. Yeah, but that sound is already made. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Like you want to, I'm at least, I want to create something that people haven't heard before. Yeah. So dare to be different. Dare to be different, but have similarity through, throughout the, the journey. You have a red thread through your music. I yeah. think that's, that's the key. If you put on a Metoma track, you can hear that it's Metoma, but all my tracks are different. Yeah. yeah. What, what, you work in Cubase. Yeah. Why is that? Because when I started making music, I didn't, I, I couldn't afford a MacBook. Yeah. And. Oh, so you worked in Windows Cubase? Yeah. Okay. So for me, it was like a good hybrid of everything I needed. But and is there is there a such thing as um, as a one DAW to rule them all? Is it or no. does it matter? No, I think the the the, 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 the com like the comfort within yourself. Yeah. Like if you if you. For example, you work in Logic, I work in Cubase. They pretty much look the same, but they have a couple different yeah. aspects. The only thing I would say, if, if you are a creative person and, and you are solely based on live elements, like you, you, you kind of like take the, the live aspects from things like sampling and like you, you want to have like recorded snare instantly and then you want to tweak it, I think and then you want to just jump over on the keyboard and you want to make a loop, I think Ableton is the best solution for you. Yeah. But within like music production, yeah. I would say like, what, what suits you, suits yeah. you, you know? If you, start, if you start working in, in Fruity Loops, like, and then five years later, somebody else comes and say like, oh, but Logic is the shit. Mm. But so far it's worked for you, why, why change? Mm. Because within the program, it's always something you can learn. You're never fully learned in a, in, in a, in a DAW. Mm. So for this masterclass, <laughs> I'm going to work in Logic. I don't have um, any plugins, actually. I have, a, <laughs> I have some basics, but not many. Uh, Tom is going to work in uh, Cubase. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to try to create something in Logic, which uh, Tom has never worked in. No, I, I have worked in it. Yeah. When, I, when I took my Bachelor in Music Technology and Production, I, okay. I worked with Logic. So you know the basics, but we're, it's, <laughs> it's, it's to showcase that it doesn't matter. Not to matter. brag, but I think I know more than you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. You know a lot more than me. Dude, you have a bachelor degree in music technology. <laughs> now I have a, you know, empty uh, project open. Where do you, where do you start from there? Do you start with the melody? Do you start with the beat? Do you start, you know, do you, th do you think what kind of sound, what kind of genre, or wh where do you start? It has changed over the years yeah. of producing where I start, like, Earlier, I, I always started with making a track, basically. Yeah. Just opening up a project, s start making some drums. Oh, this is groovy. I like this direction. Um, I think the, the most important thing when you open up a project is knowing the direction of song you want to make. Mm. Like the style, like uh, 
what, what inspires me today? Do I want to make like a new disco track? Do I want to make a tech house track? Do I want to make a, a, a pop record? Do, does the pop record want to be in 98 BPM? And that's the tempo for, and we're gonna get back to that. But like the, is it gonna be like a slow track? Is it gonna be a fast track? Mm. So just n prepare yourself before you go and open up the project because then it's easier for you to, okay, I'm here, I'm ready to do my job, let's do it. Being organized is the way to let your creativity flow the best. Yeah. Because then you're like, okay, I have a clear idea of what I'm gonna make today. I'm gonna make a 126 BPM EDM banger. Yeah. Okay, then you know what you're making. For me, it's always important to, to find inspiration from other great artists, but never try to copy them. So if I listen to songs, oh, that's a cool melody. Ooh, that's a cool sound. How did they make that? Yeah. And then in the creative process of making it, you make something completely different, but you have an idea of what you want to make. Mm. Taking the inputs from what you like and turning it into a creative tool where you get something new out of it is the smartest and the best thing. My set in Europe may not work in the US because the culture is so different and the, and the music scene is so different. Yeah. So f for me, like being a DJ coming from like a student community where I DJed in, in my years as a student at shitty clubs mm. for students, it was amazing though, but uh, you learn how to read the crowd. Mm. And it's the same way with making music. Just like looking at, okay, going into, going into music charts and look at what's popular right now. Then you get a clear idea of wh what people like. Yeah. If, if you don't want to make that track, okay, that's fine. But maybe there's something in that track where you can find inspiration yeah, yeah, yeah. to implement. Like, oh, is there a sound there? Oh, that's a cool sound. Like, oh, how did I make that? Maybe I can put that into my production. Yeah. I would like for me, when I make a track, I always think to myself, okay, when I'm six years old, I want to hear this on a jukebox. Yeah. Because then I know it's timeless. Yeah. You know, if you, if you manage to make a track that sounds timeless, then people are going to listen to it like... Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a hell, of an, uh, <laughs> hell of a statement <laughs> to, to say to a guy who hasn't created a, uh, a song before. Yeah, just, um, just make a timeless song and you know, you're there. <laughs> If, if your goal is to become a superstar, like I don't think, I don't think sitting here 15 hours per day trying to make a track is right for you. No, then, no, no. Th then, I, then I think it's better to rather go out, earn some money uh, and pay a uh, ghost producer, ghost producer and, uh, and uh, pay for some imaging, like pay for Instagram followers and yeah. because that, then that is the right uh, recipe for you. Yeah. But for me, it's this, yeah. this is my universe, like being the here, creating and, and the feeling of like just the feeling of like making something from scratch to f finish and then knowing that, okay, I've done this. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. This is what I do. I open a Logic project. Uh, yeah. It's empty. Uh, do I care about what kind of key it's in? Is it in now or is that for later? That's for later. Okay, that's nice. I feel this kind of limits yourself because then it, 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 like, okay, it's, it's hard for you that doesn't know music theory to know, okay, w which key am I working in right now? Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I work on the track, I can't hear the, the key. 
Yeah. But I can understand the difference between major and minor and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the difference between major and mi minor is basically, if I play a major chord. It's, it's only the white. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's only the white keys here. This is a C major. And this is a C minor. Yeah. So it's, you can, you can, say that C minor is a more like if you want to create sad music it's it's mostly in minor yeah but if you want to create like happy music it's in major but you can also play mi minor chords in the major key so basically if we go to google and we write a similar key to C major. So you see there's three minor keys that are in the similar key range of C major. But if you, for example, are a person that uses a uh, sample uh, library, say you use Splice. Yeah. A lot of people they use Splice these days because it's an easy, accessible tool for people to find samples. Yeah. Then if you go here and we and we find, for example, say instruments, and I want the guitar, and I want this 109 BPM. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I drag this into my project. And Splice, it's a, that's a sample uh, site where you can... Uh yeah, it's basically like a community where you can subscribe for... You can have a, su a su subscription. Yeah. Is that the word? Subscri yeah, I think yeah. so. I use Splice a yeah, lot because there's so many... But, but there's, there's other, other, other um, uh, sites as well. You have Roland Cloud, yeah. you have... Uh, like uh, I think um, Ableton have something there themselves. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of different places where you can find um, sample libraries yeah. where you pay for a subscription. Yeah. So you can s download the samples and you can drag them into your project and they are license free. You can use them and you can release. Yeah. So the only thing that you have to remember when you do that is that that limits also your sounds. Yeah. Because if you like, if I drag in this into the project, it's 109 BPM. My project is right now in 120. I change it to 109. Then you see that the alignment of the the start and the and the finish ends up being in alignment with the bars. Yeah. So here you have four bars: one, two, three four that's one bar yeah yeah and for example in you said tech house the structure of tech house is basically eight bars 16 bars 32 bars 64 bars so in in that parameter something new is about to happen so after eight bars you add some layers after eight, another eight bars you add some layers or after 16 bars you add some layers after then another 16 bars you add some layers yeah and then you break it down. So, but we're gonna get into that later. But here, the alignment is, I'm on bar right now. And the, the key is G sharp minor. Yeah. Yeah. You have splice? Yeah. So the, so you found a sample called Kashmir guitar, 125 BPM. Number fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. And the this the tempo here is hundred and twenty five and the key is F sharp minor. So basically that means that I need to change it to hundred and twenty five and I know that the key here is F sharp minor. Yeah. Yeah. So you then have to go in your project because you're in Logic Pro and sh change it to F sharp minor. There you go. Yeah. But my advice to you here is already 
if you're gonna if you have chosen okay this is the sample i want to cho choose yeah there's probably ten thousand other persons that have done it so i would have personally i would have gone to process here and you probably have the same in your yeah would you pitch shift it no i would first time stretch it so it's in a different tempo uh i could uh change the um, the tempo yeah time and pitch machine time and pitch machine 125 that's uh that's the original tempo yeah. and then you want to change it to say 115 or do you want to make a tech tech song no let's just use this as an example yeah. for now so 115 yeah boom boom but my project is still in 125 so should i change my project then to 115 yeah. So now you change the project to 115 and you see that from from the first bar here yep. to the last bar, there's four bars. So this yep. is a sample that is four bars. But do you do that on the many samples to change the tempo to just create a, a, a different kinds of, um, you know, sound from the from the sample? Yeah, like if, if I want to make if I want to use a sample from splice. I usually try to modulate it as much as possible so it doesn't sound the same as the original. Okay. So now it's 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 slowed down, of course, it sounds the same here. It has the same structure. Yeah. But already here it's different. And then if I transpose it, yeah. Say for example, I go from F F sharp minor to maybe like a A minor. So I, I pitch it up three semitones. Yeah. You have 12 different keys yeah. in a scale of like music theory. Mm. And f going from one note and a half step down, one semitone is called like a jump. And then you can also jump to like a full note and that's two se minus two semitones. Mm. So that's one note. So when I go from F sharp minor to an A, I jump one full note plus one semi. Yeah. So one full note and one semi. That's, that's I transpose it three steps. Yeah. So, so what what you can do is just count, I guess, because you have the... Yeah, so yeah. I, have, I, I have the keyboard here. I know that the key... So C, D, E, F. Yeah. F sharp. Yeah. And I want it to be in the key of E minor. Then I just count. One, two, three. Okay, okay. And then I transpose it. So I go into my so here in Cubase it's very it's very easy because I can just with a with a simple step go up here and just drag it up and it automatically without like needing to yeah to read the information and then process it it just automatically do it and now it sounds yeah right right so you do that to create like a different kind of sound. So yeah, because yeah. yeah, I can the, the, the sound is the same, but yeah. I'm, 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 I make it sound less original to the original sound because yeah. then, then, and and I would also maybe have put on some like modulation. I go in here, and I find the chorus sound, and I drag up the modulation. Maybe there's like a preset in here, acoustic guitar picking. You see, now it's going too fast for me. <laughs> yeah, but that's the, I, I get the okay, point. I, we, I have the same thing here. I hold down option, I press up, yeah. I go, uh, wait, I just have to um, yeah. highlight it first. Option up, that's uh, one semitone, right? Yeah. And two, and three. And, three. and, and there you go. Yeah. yeah. One way to start is um, adding um, samples, go to splice, goes to, go to those kinds of places to find inspiration or find, uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, you know, something to begin from. Yeah, ju even just uh, start as a structure. Yeah. You can, like, even, even like if you are a um, beginner, 
and you feel uncomfortable just starting blank and you need some sort of, of guidance, you could also just go and, okay, what's my favorite track this week? Yeah. Boom, buy that track, drag it into your project and use that as a reference. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, just like, okay, what's the tempo in the track? Just yeah. say, for example, my favorite track at the moment is, is Sophie Tucker with Purple Hat. I buy this record, but then I want the information from it. I go here and just by simply just adding key and tempo, I probably get, and here we go, A major and the tempo is 94 BPM. Yeah. So that means, okay, I know the, I know the key and I know the tempo. Then I go into my project, I change it to 90, if, if this is a, a type of song I want to make though. Yeah. Change it to 94 and I know the key is A major. Do you start with the, um, do you set the arrangements or not the arrangements, but the structure of the song early on? Like in, uh, if you're working with Tech House, for example, do you set the, the eight bars, uh, 16 bars? No, that I just know. Yeah, because I would do like... Uh, yeah, make, make mark. Marks. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, beats, you know, and, um, and then go to, you know, uh, the next bar and then maybe add another mark, which says, uh, um, beat uh, main. I think you should have an intro, eight bars. Eight bar intro. Then a verse. Then a verse. Eight bar. Yeah. Then a pre-chorus. Then eight bars. Then 16 bars of chorus. And the chorus could be eight bar co chorus and then eight bar post-chorus. So I need to take a pee. You know, this is a this is a typical pop song structure. Yeah, this is a structure that works for everything. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. So, if if the so if the song structure is four on the four 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 on the floor. Yeah. Then, this is the most typical structure of a song. Maybe two you, two bars of verse on the first one, or. Yeah, you can have you you can have eight like sixteen bars. Yeah with verse on the first, but, but songs today, they are getting shorter and shorter. So it, it depends like what you, yeah. Yeah. So if, and also you can dub, like if you have a tech house song, you can easily double this. Yeah. So the, the length of everything would be twice as long. Yeah. Because you need the tension to build the different elements. Yeah. And same with like, like deep house and yeah. And, and techno and like they, 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 they like the, as, as longer it gets, the better it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I've been doing or sometimes it's, it's uh, put on say, um, I'm just going to find. Yeah. So this is a song that you created uh, just for fun. So, so what I sometimes do, it's just, um, it's just... Um, Have you found the tempo here? Do you know the tempo of the song? Uh, no, but I can find that. I can just uh, go to um, metering and uh, BPM counter. And then... Um, this will find the tempo. And then 24. Yeah. No. So, so, uh, so if, 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 if you don't know how to find that meter, like the counter. My tip for you is to go on Google and you search tap tempo. And here if you go. If it's a song that's not that recognized. If, if not, you can just search yeah. BPM on Google. Yeah, and then you play the song and you tap the tempo. Yeah. And you see. So if, 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 this, if this plugin doesn't give you the accurate BPM, yeah. because sometimes it does, yeah. then I would use this tool. Yeah. This is sometimes what I sometimes do. I, you know, I take some of my you know favorite tracks or uh, a track, uh, then I hear. 
Move your feet like this. Yeah, so this, like this. this actually fits pretty good. That's what I've, sometimes I just, uh, you know, listen to other people's setups, yeah. especially in tech house and stuff like that. And, and I put, uh, you know, intro, beat, uh, and then, you know, so you, 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 order, you, for example. And you, then you are way more structu structural than I am because I don't do that. <laughs> no, but I have to be because yeah. I have to have some kind of understanding of how the song will play out. Because if I just start with the, with the loop or something, then yeah. I get all, um, you know, I get all confused in my head. I need some kind of structure to know where this is going. Okay, what do you want to make today? I, with my skills, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but with my skills, I don't know much, but uh, I think like... Uh, like your vision, like what do you like? What do you, what do you see yourself like? Do you want to play the songs you are making in the club or do you want to like make songs where you play them on the radio or...? Coming from... Um, from in, coming from DJing, I, I think a club track would be uh, both uh, would, would fit my skills, uh, you know, a, a house that? track. So something with some groovy bass lines and maybe... So a tech house song. Yeah. Yeah, so say 124 BPM then. But, but, but aren't, don't you agree that I shouldn't create like a future house crazy dubstep song on my first... You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but like with my skills. I made the I made the opera song the first song I created when I was sixteen so I don't know I'm I'm not to judge or tell yeah okay but is it harder I think the 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 more you know about about like theory from music yeah like music theory and that goes back to sheets reading sheets like playing an instrument. Yeah. Like understanding the, the basics of like minor, major, yeah. like knowing, okay, which key is, is this in? Yeah. Then I think it's easier to, to make something a bit more mel me melodic. Yeah. Say I want to make a festival anthem. I go into this DPS Avenger synth I have because I know the samples on this is great. And then I go into melodic EDM. And I know, okay, tomorrow I'm playing, I'm playing some big stages. Matoma! <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know. Yeah, but I get it. Yeah, but, but for you, you, you can't just, so you have to. I have to start on scratch. I can't do those chords, you know? I can't find that. Yeah. What, so, what so took what, you two seconds now would take me, you know, two years. No, <laughs> you know? no, not two years, but okay. it, it, it would stop it. It, <laughs> <laughs> it would probably take you like a, 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 a bit more time. I love those groovy anthems, those, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of a uh, new disco. Uh, groovy. Okay, so let's, let's let's say that you want to make that that type of song. Yeah. Let's start. Then I think the best thing is to to start in a tempo you're comfortable with. You know works. Yeah. I would say 124. Yeah. You put your song into 124. Yeah. Yeah. You open up an audio. Uh, let's let's write that to let's name it to a kick. Yeah. So here you can also like when it comes to kicks. Do you always do that? You you are you good at naming every time so you have the um, structure. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Naming and giving it a, uh, some color. Yeah, yeah. So and also here, knowing tech house. Here, here we are getting into the finesses. So a tech house kick is different than like a EDM kick. Mm. Do you know that? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit more crunch to it or am i off <laughs> no i don't know how to explain it but it's uh, definitely a little bit more oomph yeah 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 that, I, I would i would use the word crunch and oomph yeah and i think also tech house kicks they are slightly shorter in tails yeah so for for example i can i can let's let's just drag up two different kicks here so i have this vengeance sound pack that i got in 2015 with all these amazing sounds and let's say future house 
Let's see here. Open the kick. Here we have it. So as you can see here, would you call this a tech house kick? Now do you feel like this kick uh, is the kick that you're seeking for a tech house song? Yeah, but because this is this is the most important thing when you because I, I feel a lot of people they just drag and uh, drag and drop and they don't think much about the sample that they, yeah. they, they, they drag into the project. So for me, it's always okay. Is this? I, I've been dragging in kicks from Splice, but that's wrong. No, no, <laughs> it's, no, it's not wrong. So let's let's go to Splice then, and and. Because Splice is basically what I, I just yeah. used, just uh, the, here you have yeah. all the different all the different samples in one tool. Yeah. So, uh, so let's tech kick. Is that the kick that you would... But, but this is what's... You know, this is, I don't have the ear to isolate, isolate sounds as good as you have, you know? So if you, if that sounds, that last one sounds definitely more, more as a so tech house kick. So how can you say that you don't have the ear when you just define that sounds more as a tech house kick? Because I'm learning. <laughs> no, because, because you're underestimating yourself. You, you don't do that. Well, okay. Yeah. So there we go, we found the kick, drag and drop. And as you can see, the tail is shorter. So if you see here, this is the sample. This is the whole sample. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if I feel that this sample and the kick and the tail on the kick, the tail is the how long the sample, the sound is. So if, if I feel, okay, here, the sample is a bit too long. Yeah. I shorten it and then I take the volume and I automate. So I just, I took my kick from, from one beat. No, actually it was almost two, two beats to shorten it down to two bar within a beat and then I automated the the sample so now from one bar within the beat it decreases the volume yeah it's it's a shorter punch you know yeah yeah you hear yeah, yeah, yeah. so if if and and this I do because I know that my bass lines are probably going to be very busy. So for example, with, with like big room, you have like the, the kick is basically the bass line because it's like boom, 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 mm. boom, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you, maybe you have a bass line going on the, on the half beat of the kick. So you have kick, bass, kick, bass, kick, bass. But on a tech house song, you most you usually have the bass line playing over the kick. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Because it's more it's more rhythm in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then But do you do you always start like this? Do you do you start with a kick structure? On a tech if if I was to make a kick, uh, tech house song, yeah, yeah, I would I would start with some drum elements. Yeah. So here I I go, I now I have eight bars with a kick and I would probably put on some some snare or like a clap or like get some groovement going so I, I know the direction in the groove of the song. So what I just did is that I, I used the tool that you love the most, Splice, and I just found a, a, a search for an 808 snare. Yeah. So basically 808 comes from the drum machine of Roland yeah. back in the 80s. I know. Yeah, you know, a lot of like um, producers, they, they, 
it's there to to go to, especially like in in house music, yeah, because the sounds are so so satisfying for the ear. Um, so I just found the 808 snare, this snare here, and I downloaded it, and then I dragged it into the project, and now I've aligned it so it has given me some sort of rhythm. Yeah. In the in the eight bars I've uh, made. Yeah. So and on with Tech House, it's it's basically on the on the second. It's Beat. On, it's on the second bar. Okay. Yeah. And then if you can see, now I'm in 116 beats. So that means I can, I've like within one bar, I have four beats. Yeah. So I can align them where I want to align them. So the rhythm I want. So if I want like a snare to be. Yeah. It's a, it's possible for me to do that right now. And, the, and here you just go crazy. You just test yeah, out different yeah, kind yeah, of uh, rhythms. The, the only thing that you have to to know is that in Tech House, there's every second bar mm. you have the snare. So it's kick, 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 and then on top of the kick, on every second kick, there's a snare. Kick, snare, kick, snare, kick. Yeah, or a clap or whatever. Yeah, or a clap or, yeah. yeah. Cool. So. And this is, the, we're gonna dig more into this on the next tutorial, but like the, the basics of a bass, bass line and. So. That's, uh, you just took a little bit shortcut, but that's okay. That's okay, yeah, but you can do that too. Everybody can do that. I think I, I, think I can uh, make this, yeah. yeah. So now we made this and I want you to create the kick and the snare in the structure that suits your genre and style. It could be any tempo you want, as long as you are selected with the samples and you create the pattern that suits you. We have shown you the basics of a tech house song. So if you want to create a tech house song with us, then sure, be our guest. But if you want to create a, a pop record, just remember to align the samples so they sound the way that you want them. And it should be in a structure of four bars. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and I guess this, uh, this goes for me as well. Yeah. You want but, me to make this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can make it. I, yeah. I can I can I can handle it. But but do you want me to do you want us to do two different songs so I create something else? Yeah, and okay. Until next time, well, why don't you create an uh, another uh, another know, track? Yeah, an, or another groove or another like kick. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I until next time, I choose my tempo and I choose the the style I want to create. Yeah, and we see what we have. Okay, cool. Cool. Teaching Toby is presented by Master Channel. Instantly produce outstanding masters at masterchannel.ai. Use the code METOBI during checkout for 50% off.